my name is Ariel Hampton. I'm a junior here at Emory, and I'm majoring in anthropology. Um, today I will be presenting on Simicifuga racemosa, also known under the scientific name of Actea racemosa. Uh, it is a member of the Ranunculaceae family, or the buttercup family, and it is commonly known as black cohosh. Brief overview of what will be discussed in this presentation. Um, general things like the botanical description and traditional uses, going on to chemistry and pharmacology, as well as biological activity, a few clinical studies, contraindications, and current uses in allopathic and CAM therapies. Here we see the distribution of black cohosh. It is native to North America, naturally growing in the middle to eastern regions of North America, um, extending as far north as Quebec and Ontario, Canada, and going as far south as the southern United States. Black cohosh is a perennial herbaceous plant, meaning that at the end of each growing period, the stems and leaves die down. Um, and in the following growing period, they grow again, producing large green leaves with small serrated leaflets that tend to grow in groups of three. These grow from the dark brown to black knotted rhizome, from which it probably gets its common name of black cohosh. Um, in the image, we see the petalless flowers from the racemes of black cohosh. Uh, they are comprised of multiple stamens surrounding a single stigma, and these bloom between late June and August. Traditional uses. Um, black cohosh was very, very popular amongst Native American cultures. A couple of uses that it was documented as being used in uh, were against snake bite, where the root was chewed and directly applied to the wound, as well as against rheumatism and joint pain. It was also markedly noted as a very important component of women's health. Um, it was thought to ease childbirth as well as stimulate menstruation. And uh, in other texts, it was later documented as being an expectorant, an antispasmodic, diaphoretic, meaning that it stimulates sweat, and an emetic in large enough doses. There are a lot of compounds found in black cohosh, none of which have been identified as the single marker of purity in black cohosh. Um, some of the main compounds include triterpene glycosides, and a large group of the triterpene glycosides found in black cohosh largely contain semigenol as the aglycone. Some other compounds found include semisifugicides, semiracemicides, and actine, which will later be discussed. Um, as well as phenolic compounds such as ferulic, isoferulic, and caffeic acids. And here we see some of the structures of the compounds. A common misconception about black cohosh is that it's a phytoestrogen. Um, however, when experiments were conducted on plants that were commonly associated with decreasing menopausal symptoms in women, it was found that black cohosh exhibited no estrogenic or anti-estrogenic properties. Um, this raised many questions because it was also shown that black cohosh did indeed still affect certain menopausal symptoms such as hot flashes. Um, other experiments were done to try to determine the method of action in which these were being done and a possible pathway that could be being affected by black cohosh um, is the 5-HT7 serotonin receptor pathway. 
Uh, this pathway is involved in thermoregulation and the compound in omega methyl serotonin found in black cohosh could be affecting this pathway similar to the way that SSRIs affect serotonin receptors and could be lowering the incidence of heat flashes through that. Um, in another experiment, the protein actin, also found in black cohosh, showed potent anti-HIV activity um, by inhibiting H9 lymphocyte replication. Um, in a study conducted to test the effects of exercise on bone mineral density, black cohosh was found to give no added benefits. However, in another study, phase 3 double-blind randomized trial testing the effects of black cohosh on menopausal symptoms in women, it was shown to decrease hot flashes by 20% as compared to the placebo. Um, in a longitudinal study following up on claims of possible hepatotoxicity, um, no hepatotoxic effects were found in postmenopausal women who had been taking black cohosh supplements for a year. Um, though it isn't officially re generally recognized as safe, black cohosh is still viewed as a relatively safe supplement to take. Um, some instances of gastrointestinal upset and rash have been reported, as well as some cases of hepatotoxicity that were reported in patients with underlying risk factors for liver disease, and this is more common when the extract is performed in ethanol. Other hepatotoxic cases involving black cohosh under other circumstances and preparations have also been investigated, but in these, no link of causality was found. Um, in current use, black cohosh supplements are sold in health stores and online. Uh, they're marketed towards women to decrease menopausal symptoms and increase serotonin levels, but since there are no single compounds that are recognized as a marker of purity, um, some products authenticities are up for question. In conclusion, though it is not generally recognized as safe, um, black cohosh is still seen as a relatively safe plant to incorporate into health routines. Um, it has a very, very long history in women's health, and I see more research being done to continue its use in women's health. Um, more research is definitely necessary to determine the definitive method of action and active compounds to help in regulation and purity controls. Thank you.